something to think about, huh? What if those blessings come through things that we would actually rather do without most of the time? You know, God does things in His way. I was just reading uh, this morning, and it, uh, Scripture was talking about God's ways are higher than our ways. And because of that, He knows best, even when we're not sure about the things that we're going through. So, uh, praise God for that. So this morning, again, I am so glad that, that we're able to gather together. And, and in person, we're able to worship our Lord corporately. This morning, I want to talk about the best kind. The best kind. So we live in a world where everyone wants to tell you how to live. Everyone wants to tell you how to live. Right? If you don't think so, turn on the television, go to your mailbox, take something out of there, uh, look at the billboards around town, go wherever and you're going to find someone who wants to tell you how to live. This is how it should be. And so many people are frozen by the sheer volume of decisions that have to be made. <clears throat> there are so many things that people are just trying to, to filter through. What is the right decision to make? What is the right thing to do? How do I know what is the right thing? I got one group of people that's telling me this is the way it should be, and another group of people that's telling me this is the way it should be, and then another group of people that's saying this is the way it should be, and I'm not sure. I just don't know what to do. There's so many decisions to make, and people are literally just frozen by this massive amount of decisions that they have to make not knowing how to live life. The latest social media challenge seems to be uh, great, even though the news says people are dying from it. Now, I'm not talking about a particular one. I'm saying that all these decisions, everything that people are trying to make, social media. Now, I know that for many here, social media is not necessarily a large part of your life. But for Younger people, social media is one of the greatest parts of their life. They, they, they can hardly go without being connected somehow to social media. And when they get on social media and they look at all of these things, there are things that go viral, right? And when something goes viral, it means it's seen by a tremendous amount of people. And so there are people that do things just simply to get likes on social media. There are people that do things to make it popular. There are things that happen. Social media is something that, that all these people get on and look at. And, and for many, it even dictates their actions because they want to see what the latest YouTube contributor has to say about a certain thing. Or they want to know what um, the latest TikTok craze is going on or whatever is happening. And so all of these things, people look at it and go, well, it must be great because all these people are doing it. When in fact they find out later, no, people are dying from this thing. They're just frozen by all of the stuff to do. So the question is, what is a person to do? What are we to do? How are we to know? What is it that we're supposed to do? How can we figure this out? Well, the wisest person that ever lived has something to tell us. The wisest person that ever lived has something to tell us. His name was Solomon. You might have heard of him before. Solomon has something to tell us. Look with me to Proverbs chapter 19, verses 20 through 23. Proverbs 19, 20 through 23. Solomon says this. He says, Listen to counsel and accept discipline, that you may be wise the rest of your days. Many plans are in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand. What is desirable is in a man is his kindness, and it is better to be a poor man than a liar. The fear of the Lord leads to life, so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Solomon has some wonderful things to tell us there. Solomon was the wisest man to live, and he said, listen to counsel, and then the part nobody wants to hear next, and accept discipline. We don't like the discipline part. Nobody likes the discipline part, right? 
We don't like discipline. But he says, listen to counsel and also accept discipline because here's a, here's a news flash, okay? Something you may not know. Now listen closely. Re look at me. Listen closely. You're not always right. I know for some of you it's a news flash. But you're not always right. Sometimes you have to be disciplined because you're making the wrong decision. Sometimes there are things you're doing that's not right. Sometimes the things that you're doing that maybe you thought was the best is not. And sometimes we all have to be disciplined. But we need to listen to wise counsel. We need to listen to the counsel. We need to understand the people that we're listening to. Remember, we got to look for wise counsel. Just because it's followed by however many million viewers on YouTube doesn't mean it's wise. Doesn't mean it's wise. Listen, if you want to know something that will go viral, just look up cat videos. You look up cat videos, there's millions and millions of views of cat videos. Now, they may teach us something, I don't know. Um, but is it really wise counsel? No, but there's millions of them out there. Solomon was the wisest man to live, and he said, listen to counsel and accept discipline. He goes on to say that the counsel of the Lord will stand. So understand what he's saying here. The counsel that we're supposed to be listening to is the counsel of the Lord. Well, how do we do that? Well, we open up his word and we read it. And through reading his word, we receive wise counsel, right? We study his word. We listen to those who are appointed by God to present his word to us. And all of those things, as we come together, we receive the counsel of the Lord, and we know that the counsel of the Lord will stand. So if we're understanding this, the wisest person that ever lived on this earth says that this is what we're supposed to do, and he says that the counsel of the Lord will stand, then I want you to look with me to verse 22 again. Verse 22 said, What is desirable in a man is his kindness, and it's better to be a poor man than a liar. Kindness. The counsel of the Lord says kindness is desirable in a person. So think about how many of our social problems could be solved with kindness. Just with kindness. Just think about that. Most of the time, if you respond to someone with kindness, they respond back with kindness. Or at the very least, it stops whatever was going on with them. Kindness is something that we all need to put first and foremost in our life. Kindness is something that we have got to make sure that we do because kindness shows love, not hate. Well, you know, I'm not always able to show kindness, preacher. Sometimes I get ticked off about something. Sometimes people make me mad. Sometimes there's things that go on. I understand that, and guess what? You know whose problem that is? It's yours. That's right. It's your problem because you allowed something to do that to you. You allowed someone or something to make you so angry that you can't be kind, that you can't be kind to another person. Well, why is it that you can't be kind? You know what? If there's anything that you do with someone that you want to watch them get upset, just speak to them with an angry tone. You don't even have to say anything that's, that's bad. Just use an angry tone. And people will immediately respond in anger. It will get them upset. <coughs> so, kindness shows love. When we show people kindness, then what they understand is it is loving. It's not going to make them angry because what we're showing is something that's kind. It's exactly how Jesus responded even to those who wanted to crucify him, those who wanted to put him to death, those that wanted to do all of these things, Jesus was kind to them because he still loved them. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so, <coughs> a few weeks ago, <coughs> I ran into Brother Kevin Wade. 
and he on the on the window windshield across the top of the windshield of his truck I saw this following statement be kind to every kind and I thought wow just think about that be kind to every kind to everybody so what are you saying preacher we need to be kind to people who are not like us yes we need to be kind to um, people that <clears throat> don't think like us yes um, but you know what I'm also saying you need to be kind to those people that really tick you off there are people that you simply can walk up to them and get mad it happens there are people in our life that when we see them we start getting angry because we know they're gonna say something or do something or whatever to push our buttons right they do it on purpose we know they're just trying to make us mad but what if we responded with kindness how long do you think it would take them to stop pushing those buttons how long do you think it would take for us to overcome that um, dynamic that's going on there if we just simply responded with kindness kindness diffuses so many situations where people are already primed to respond with hate look <coughs> We know that in this world, this lost, evil world, that there are all types of prejudice. There are all types of things that people hold against other people. And sometimes they're already primed, waiting to see what are you going to say. If they walk up to me and they say so-and-so, I'm already on it. I mean, I've already formulated my battle plan. I already know how angry I'm going to be about something. I'm, I'm ready because I know they're going to say something that's going to make me angry. And yet, they walk up and they say something kind. All of a sudden, I'm at a loss. <laughs> Wait, that wasn't what I expected. What's going on here? Why, why are you speaking to me that way? Why is it that you responded? And sometimes we're so primed and ready to respond with something ugly that when someone speaks kindness to us, it literally, we don't know what to say. Sometimes if someone speaks to us with ugliness and we simply speak a kind word back to them, it diffuses the whole situation. Think about this when we have people that are out rioting and all this stuff going on. What causes them to get more and more violent and more and more people and more and more angry and all of that is not kindness it's hate and when people come out and they fuel that it just blossoms into this giant ball of hate with all of the things going on what if instead of that what if people came out and had kindness what if people were kind to one another even though something they didn't understand or something that they didn't agree with or something that they were upset about but they responded in a kind manner understand that you can disagree with somebody in a kind manner you understand that you don't have to be angry with them when you disagree you can disagree in any way and still do it in a kind manner and when you do that how much does that diffuse a situation versus the opposite of throwing it in hate and it's like putting gasoline on a fire it just gets worse the world has primed us all to stand our ground and back down from no one listen don't you dare let anybody push you around don't you dare let anybody tell you something and 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 push you down don't you ever let anybody treat you uh, this way don't ever and so we're already primed we're, we're waiting for something to happen you know we're ready somebody could come in here and say well you know um, we ought to put blue carpet in here what's the matter with green it's been here for 75 years what's wrong with green what do you got against green it was just simply a suggestion we put blue carpet in but now you're suddenly you're angry because it was green why you got to change that somebody can say well you know I think today we ought to have some chicken what's wrong with hamburgers I mean we're just ready to argue about whatever it is we're primed we're ready if you disagree with me in any shape form or fashion I'm ready to get angry with you because it's different what if instead we responded with kindness what if instead everything we did we let kindness drive us 
Everything we did, we did it in such a way that it was kind. People have grabbed on so hard to this being primed and ready for a fight that they're going to fight over whatever it is. Whatever it is. It doesn't matter. They look for some ulterior motive in everything, even when it doesn't exist. You look nice today. What are you trying to say? I didn't look nice yesterday. What, why did you say that to me today? I, 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 there must be an ulterior motive. Why did you say that I look nice today? Because you do. I, I mean, there, there was nothing else. But we look for that. Listen, when people, if somebody goes on the news and gives a news report, I guarantee you almost every one of us are trying to read between the lines. What are they really saying? What's really going on there on that news report? Now, I'm not saying that the news always reports the, the, the straight shooting stuff, right? There, there's things sometimes that it's not right. But my point is it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a news report, if it's a, a, a nutrition report, if it's uh, just someone that interacted with somebody else, is, what is the motive here? Why are you doing that? And, and you may get that when you're kind to someone that you haven't been kind to before. What's going on here? Why are you treating me that way? Why are you acting like that? Well, you know, I'm acting that way because I should have been doing that the whole time. I should have been responding to you in kindness the whole time. There's no ulterior motive. What it is is I finally realized that the remedy for everything that's wrong in our social world today is kindness. And it's so easy to be kind. It really is. I mean, think about how easy it is to be kind. I've seen people as I approach them, and, and they have a scowl on their face. You know, I'm, is it me? Is it somebody behind me? You know, why are they, who are they angry at? What's going on? But I see people with a scowl on their face. You know what I try to do? I try to say, I smile real big and say, hi, how are you today? And suddenly you see that scowl change and, and kind of a smile. Well, I'm doing well. You suddenly see this smile come across their face, even behind the face mask. You can see that. You know, we, we have a face mask on, and even behind the face mask, people can see the smile, they can hear the kindness in your voice, and they can smile. You know, <clears throat> in, the, in the year of masks, it really changed so much. But one of the things that, even with a mask on, covering, you know, what, 75% of somebody's face, you can still tell if somebody's angry. You can tell if they're smiling. You can tell. You can still see it. And it reminded me of um, <clears throat> years ago when we were at another church, um, there was this little girl, and she was trying to talk to her mother and explain to her who she had talked to or who she had seen or whatever. And she was talking about my wife, Julie. And she was trying to tell this lady. Now, the, the girl knew my wife, but she couldn't remember her name. And the, her mom knew, knew Julie very well. And so she was trying to explain to her who she was talking about. And she said, you know, Mama, the lady that smiles with her eyes. Oh, you're talking about Julie. Immediately, the woman already knew who it was because of the eyes. Because of the way that when, when she smiles, it just lights up a room with her eyes. People can see that. So even though that much of your face is covered, your eyes can tell a huge story. And if we share kindness with people, even behind a mask, we can share that kindness and we can diffuse situations that could be ugly. We can help people to see that there are good things in the world, that it doesn't always have to be this confrontation. It doesn't always have to be this angry situation that we run into so many times. And so... Kindness comes easily because it comes out of the joy in your heart. So if you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and, and you have the joy in your heart, then the kindness comes easily. Joy in your heart comes from a fear of the Lord or a relationship with Him. Right? So what does Solomon say about this in verse 23? Solomon said this, he said, The fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. The fear of the Lord leads to life. The fear of the Lord, the relationship with Him, leads to salvation. That salvation 
gives you that peace, that peace that you don't have to fear evil. It also gives you that joy. It fills your heart with joy, and when it fills your heart with joy, then that relationship overflows in the form of kindness. It can overflow in that so that others can see that in you. The best thing is kindness. The, the title today was The Best Kind, but there was a little comma in there if you weren't paying close attention. And what that was talking about is the best is kind. Kindness, being kind, that's the best thing, is to be kind. Now look, I don't know about you, but in the last, I don't even know, the last several years, I've seen enough anger, I've seen enough hate, I've seen enough people being awful to one another just simply because they were a different skin color or they grew up in a different part of the world or they uh, followed a different um, world view. Nothing but anger. Now, when we see all of that and all those things happen, it grows rapidly. And when it grows rapidly, then people begin to form those ideas about things. And they already decided before you ever talk to them how they're going to respond. The anger that they have already for you, you haven't even opened your mouth yet. Or maybe you're the one that's already formed that the decision how you're going to respond if someone responds to you. And we want to respond with anger. We want to be the one that bows up about whatever it is because we don't want to be pushed around anymore. But listen, it's the kindness that changes things. It's the kindness that helps people overcome those barriers that the world has placed in front of them. It's the kindness that helps us get past the anger issues and the hate and all of the other things that the world has said should be on you. That you should be against these things. You should not let anybody be different from you. If they are, then, then they have something against you. Listen, it's okay to be different. God created us all differently. He didn't create anybody exactly like me. And he didn't create anybody exactly like you. He created so many people all different ways. He created these people in the world because all together they make a whole. And every single one of them are created in his image. So it doesn't matter if a person is different than us, if they grew up in a different location, if they have different thoughts, if they're, they're different uh, socioeconomic status, it doesn't matter. God created all people in his image. And if we are kind to everyone, we can overcome all of this other stuff. But you see, Satan is the prince of this world. And so right now, as he's the prince of this world, he knows he's already defeated, but he's doing everything he can to take as many people with him when this is over as he can. And so he's driving the wedges between people. He's putting the hate out there. He's causing those angers to, to boil over. And every time we allow that to happen, we are used by him. But God wants us to be his messenger, to reflect the light of the world. Kindness. Kindness is the best thing. But kindness, true kindness, it comes out of a relationship with our Savior. It only comes out of a relationship with our Savior. That's the only way you can be truly kind and mean it. That's the only way. You have to have the relationship with God. You have to have that relationship with Him in order to be filled with the Spirit. Understand, one of the fruit of the Spirit, part of the fruit of the Spirit is kindness, right? That's part of the fruit of the Spirit. That's what happens when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. We're filled with the Holy Spirit, and one of those things that naturally comes out is kindness. If that is how we're able to reach people for Christ, then how terrible is it if we forget to be kind? How terrible is it if we let the world convince us that we need to be angry about something? How terrible is it if we allow our own life to be such a way that we're just primed for a fight? Instead, if we allow that fruit that's within us in the Holy Spirit to come out, that kindness, what an amazing difference that would make. Do you have that relationship that fills you with joy and allows kindness to overflow? 
Do you have that relationship? That's a question only you can answer. That's a question only you can find the answer to in your life. Do you have that relationship? You see, we don't have a, um, a sensor that we can point and find out who knows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We don't have a, um, there's, it's not stamped across our forehead when somebody walks in, saved, unsaved. We, we don't know. There are people that walk in front of us all of our lives that we would, we would absolutely believe 100,000%. Of course they are a follower of Christ. Only they may not be. There are people that walk and talk like believers all their life, but they miss the most important part, and that's the part of giving their life to Christ. Oh, they were in church every Sunday. They, 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 they gave all the time. They did all of these things. You know, there will be many that stand at the judgment and say, Lord, I did all these things in your name, and he will still say, depart from me, for I never knew you, because they never gave their life to him in the first place. They tried to live it in their own strength. There are those that live around us and we think, well, they're pretty good people, but do we know if they're believers or not? There's no way we can know. You know what? If we could just have somebody walk through like a metal detector and it tell us whether they knew Jesus or not, then we'd know exactly who we need to talk to about the Lord, right? We need to talk to you. We need to share with you. We know exactly, but we don't know. Only they and God know for sure. And so because of that, we need to share that. We need to be kind and we need to share the Holy Spirit with everyone. We need to know that we can share Christ with every person because we don't know which ones know him and which don't. What if me being angry because you took too long to deliver my food at the drive-thru is the one thing that caused that person to never want to come to church again because that preacher acted ugly in the drive-thru? But what if the kindness that I showed, because it took a long time, but I still said, I understand, you've done everything you can, it's no big deal, thank you for what you've done, have a blessed day and drive away, and how can somebody that it took so long, they had every right to be angry, but instead they were kind. Man, I need to find out how they're doing that. What if that is the kind of things that we can do? It is. Those are exactly the kind of things that we can do, and we can be kind to every person. Kind to every kind, as Brother Kevin's truck, as he has that on his truck. Be kind to every kind. It doesn't matter who they are. Well, what if we know that they're, that they're living a sinful life? Be kind. Maybe, through the kindness, you'll be able to witness to them. You'll be able to talk to them. I'm not saying that if you know that someone's living a sinful life, you just accept the sin. I'm saying you still be kind to them. You still be kind, and then maybe through that, they will be open to hearing about the gospel of Christ. But if you respond to them, you know that they're living a sinful life, and you respond to them with anger and hate, they're never going to listen to you about Christ because you're not exemplifying any of it. Kindness. Do you have the relationship that fills you with joy and allows kindness to overflow? Only you can answer that question. But the question today is, do you have it? And if not, do you want to? Do you want to have that relationship? Do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Do you want to spend that time with Christ? Because see, the thing is, if you want to, if you do and you know that that's something you want to do, today you can. God has placed you... Here today, he's given you every opportunity to accept him as Lord and Savior, but he's never going to force himself on you. Only you can make that decision. Do you know him? Well, you know, I'm a good person, and, and I've never really done bad things, and I always give to the people that need it, and I, I always try to be kind, and I try to do... Listen, that's wonderful. That's wonderful that you try to live that way, but... In your own strength, you cannot get to heaven because Scripture says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Jesus, I mean, God cannot allow sin to heaven because in His holiness, He can't allow sin to exist. 
So if all have sinned, even if you had ever done anything really that bad and you've always tried to be a nice person and you've given money and you've done those things, that's great, but you've still sinned. Well, how can you say that? Have you ever told a lie? There's pretty much nobody that can say they never told a lie. Have you ever disobeyed your parents? Have you ever done anything that was against God's word? If you have, then you sin. And the scripture says all, and we know that means all, have sinned. So the thing is, if you're here today and you've never given your life to him, no matter how wonderful you think you've lived your life up to this point, but there's never been a time when you said, I know I'm a sinner, I need a Savior, God forgive me of my sin, come into my life and be my Savior. There's never been a time when you did that, you gave yourself to him, then listen, today you still have an opportunity to do that. We don't know how long you will have that opportunity because we know one day this world's going to come to an end. We know that it's appointed unto man wants to die. We don't know when that is. So we don't know if you're ever going to have that opportunity again. This may be the only time. But today you still have that opportunity. So I want to encourage you today, if you're here and you know that you want to have that kind of relationship but you don't right now, I want to ask you to come up in just a moment. We'll have a time of invitation and I want to share with you how you can do that. If you're listening online and, and, and you know that, listen, reach out, send me a message, talk to a believer that you know, and share with them how you want to know Jesus Christ. We want to make sure that we're kind, that every person that we come in contact with, we're kind to them, and we reflect the love of Christ, that they too may be able to, to understand that and to hear about the gospel. We can easily take our stand and fight we can easily say well they live in a way that's, that's different and therefore it's wrong we can fight we can do all of those things but you know what that doesn't do is it doesn't open the door to share the gospel so today which would you rather be would you rather be primed and ready for a fight or would you rather be ready to show the kindness of God <coughs> We're going to have a time of invitation. Perhaps you need to come and talk to me about a relationship with God. Maybe you need to come to the altar and ask him to forgive you for not living in a way that others would see Jesus in you. Maybe you have someone on your heart that you need to pray for. Whatever it is, the altar will be open. And I encourage you to come. I encourage you to come. Whatever God is putting on your heart, let's pray.